Heartland family, come on. We invite you to stand to your feet this morning. Let's put our hands together like this, come on. Come on, let's celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Here we go. I wish I could tell you, wish I could describe it, but I can't contain it, can't keep it to myself. There aren't enough colors to put the whole picture, not enough words to ever say what I found. Good morning, everybody. It's Saturday. Can you guys hear me this morning? Good morning. It's Saturday of the 21 days of prayer, day 14. Come on, one more time. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. How many of you are glad for that extra few hours of sleep this morning? Wasn't that good? So great to see you. Hello, everybody at home. Hopefully, you've made it out today. It's a beautiful day, but give somebody a high five around you and tell them they look good and... We're going to get ready to pray. We're at the end of our second week. Can you believe it already? I love how God uses a little bit of time that we give him to soften our hearts. That is really, I don't know if, if let me put a name on it. This is what God's doing as you go through a first week and then a second week, don't you find that your heart is so much more softer to the things of God? And that's what God does. He just, we get, over time, we get hard or we get tough and God tenderizes us by being in his presence. Um, there's a verse that I wanna share with you this morning. Um, it's the one we've been talking about every week has had a little theme. I don't know if you've seen it. The, the first week was all about getting 
close to Jesus, just abiding in him. And the second week was about this thing called pruning. God doing some sort of a work in us where he's removing things that don't need to be there that are getting in the way. Even the stuff where we're fruitful and productive already, he prunes. And then this this last week, I want us to focus as we go into next week, just the whole week is about God, make us more fruitful. And that's what I want you to see in this. Jesus says, I'm the vine. My father's the gardener. So we spent the whole few first week just getting close to him. Every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. And stop there and notice that that is the point. The whole point is God is, wants more fruitfulness out of our lives. He who abides in me and I in him will bear much fruit. That is the goal, that you become really productive for God, that your life produces something, that that your life grows and expands. Then he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. But I want you to catch that the purpose of our lives is to bear fruit. And over and over, you will find Jesus teaching this, that we know we belong to God, we know that we're his, and from that knowledge, our life should produce fruit. And that's, that's what I wanna talk about today, the purpose of fruitfulness of our lives. Back when I was teaching about Um, the good ground a couple years ago, just getting us ready for this whole journey of growth. There was something Jesus said. He says, the seed that fell on good ground sprang up and yielded a crop a hundredfold. That's what I'm talking about, fruitfulness, that your life has a hundred times the return on investment. Like whatever you gave to God, he blessed you a hundredfold. And that's, that, that's incredible to think. Stop and think that what would happen if God would take your life and increase the productivity or increase the fruitfulness of your life by 100%. What if, or 100 times, what if, what if that happened for all of us? What would happen to the pr- productivity of the people of God if every one of us became that fruitful that God would multiply us? So I want us to think a little bit bigger today, and I want to talk about how to pray for fruitfulness. How do we we pray for, another word for this is the blessing of God, that we could be that fruitful. And so I want you to go to your prayer books. We have these little uh, orange Pray First books. If you don't have one, pick one up today, because that is a guide for prayer. All through that book are just scriptures that have been organized into prayers that you can pray. When you pray God's word, that's that's when your prayers have power. So you will find in that book, you'll find prayers of the pattern of the Lord's Prayer, the tabernacle prayer, just scriptural prayers. And one of those scriptural patterns of prayer is a a prayer of the man named Jabez. And it's a great model for how we pray for blessing. It's actually a masterpiece of how to pray for blessing. Let me show you where it's found. In 1 Chronicles chapter 4, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. We don't know what he did, but it just says that he set himself apart Maybe, maybe because he had such a heart for God. Now his mother named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. So there's a whole story about that. We don't know what that is, but there was a lot of pain in his life, a pain that it caused his mother. He grew up around some kind of pain and his mom called him that. But then here's the template for prayer. Jabez was a man who through his pain ended up being so dependent on God, Jabez cries out to the Lord, oh, that you would bless me, oh, that you would enlarge my territory, let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I can be free from pain, which lets me know that the pain doesn't, wasn't, wasn't just in his birth. This is a man who knows what pain is like, and he's asking God to bless him. But I want, want you to notice that he's asking God to, to, to hear his prayer. How many of you are thankful that God has heard every prayer that you have prayed over these last 14 days? God hears our prayers. And what's even more amazing to me is how God highlights this guy and tells a little bit of his story. This is a chapter of the Bible 
that is just about 600 names. It's just a list. It could be the most boring part of the Bible, just name after name after name after name. And all of a sudden, here's this, this one guy that God singles out and he sets apart as somebody special. And I think it's because he had a heart that was so dependent on God. He had a heart to pray. He had a heart to trust God and to say, God, I have some hopes that I think that you can do for me. So God singles him out and says, you're really, this is, this is one of my special sons. And I want you to know that when you come to God and you simply say, God, I need you. God, will you help me? God, will you bless me? You come with that combination of boldness to ask God for something big, but you're coming with a humble spirit saying, God, I need you. I think God listens to that kind of prayer. I think God's paying attention. I think God is setting you apart as somebody who's special and somebody who's different, someone that he's singling out for glory and for blessing. That, come on, somebody, I'm trying to help you today. So here's a man like us in tough circumstances, maybe pain, but he boldly prays for four things. So he cried out, number one, oh, that you would bless me. So it's just a straight prayer for blessing. He's got problems. He's got issues and pain in his life. But I want to encourage somebody right now. Some people think that you have to be perfect for God to bless you. Like the only way that God would bless me if I got everything in my life right. And Jabez shows us you don't have to be perfect. You can have pain in your life. You can have problems in your life. You can have issues. The only thing you need to realize is, God, I need you. God, I, I, have, I need your help. And what is blessing? Blessing is simply saying, God, there are some things that I cannot do by myself. Or in other words, I can only go so far, but will you accelerate me? Will you do more through me than I could ever possibly do by myself? Or in other words, I don't have what it takes. What if God, what if God, all he really wants is for you to boldly come and ask him the desires of your heart and humbly admit like, so God, I don't have what it takes, but I need you to bless me. I want you to know God is not looking for you to be perfect for him to bless you. That is a lie. Let me give you an example. Abraham was an idol worshiper. He didn't have a Bible. He didn't know the God of Israel. He was a guy who lived in a foreign country, didn't know God, but God in his mercy revealed himself somehow to this guy. And all he said to him, the only thing God says was, I want you to pick up your stuff, pack up your stuff, take your wife, everything you got, and I want you to move over there. Go there, and when you get there, I know you have... <laughs> I know you're old and 100 years old and you, you have no ability to have children, but if you go, I will bless you and I'll make you the father of a nation. He had done nothing to earn God's credit or favor. He's an, again, he is not, he's an idol worshiper. So that means he doesn't know everything. He doesn't, he doesn't understand. And this is way before any scriptures written. So he doesn't have the Bible memorized. He's just a guy who, who is willing to do this. God, if you speak to me, I'll do what you say. Come on, somebody. That's all God's looking for is God who's, do you have a heart that says, God, I need you? So this guy, Abraham, was searching after God somehow, and God says, I will bless you. Watch what he says. God blessed Abraham. I will bless you, watch this, and you will be a blessing to others. That is the vision for all of God's children. God wants to bless you so that you will be a blessing for others. And how did God bless him? God blessed him, it said, like the sky, like the stars in the sky, like the sand on the seashores. Or in other words, hundreds of times more than what he could ask or imagine. Just blessing upon blessing. And you may say, well, that's just for Abraham. Well, can I show you something out of the New Testament? Galatians chapter three, look what it says. All who put their faith in Christ share the same blessing Abraham received because of his faith. Why don't you ask God to bless you? God bless me like that. I know I don't have to be perfect, just bless me. So according to the word of God, you can pray the will of God. God bless me a hundredfold. God bless me with, with more than I need. Why? so that I can be a blessing to others. So when you sit here today, let me encourage you. You've spent a lot of time, maybe 14 days of 21 days of prayer, thinking about your shortcomings or thinking about what God needs to take out of your life or thinking about problems and pain and focusing a lot on that. But today and this following week, I want you to just have a few moments, confess your shortcomings. God knows, he's pleased you're here. 
just thank God that he's already given you his grace, no condemnation, and then get up and then start praying for blessings. Start going after tomorrow. Start going after what God has for your future. All right? You're not a disappointment to God. You can't disappoint an all-knowing God. He knows. He already knows. So just say, God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for hearing me today. I praise you in my pain. Now, Lord, I'm asking you to bless me. Do you guys get this? Because I, I need more. I need more ideas. I need more wisdom. I need more creativity. I need more resources. I need more ability. God, if I'm going to be a blessing to others, I just need more. So God, bless me. And it's okay to pray that. And then he says, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. What he's praying for is influence. God, help me to have more of an impact. Like on, on places that aren't currently in my, in my sphere of influence. God, increase my influence. Help me to help the borders of my life to expand. So don't pray small prayers. You're supposed to impact others with your life. Why not impact your whole school? Why not impact your whole neighborhood? Why not impact your whole city, your region, other cultures, reaching across states? Why, maybe God wants to use you to bless the world. How do you know? I know Abraham had no idea how God wanted to bless him. So why don't you just say, God, I want you to increase the influence. Lord, let my life have maximum influence for you. That would be a great prayer to pray, especially some of you young people. Let me just show you a scripture. The Bible says, um, sing, barren woman, you who never bore a child, burst into song, shout for joy. This is a woman in pain. You who were never in labor, because more are the children of desolate women than of her who has a husband. In other words, God's promising, saying, you think that you don't, just like Abraham, that you can't produce? Let me show you what I can do. I have miracles waiting for you that you don't even know. Like, there's more children ahead of you than what you think is possible in the natural. Even if you think you have no capability, no ability, no resources, you say, well, I don't have what it takes. Well, guess what? Every person in this room believes that. I don't have what it takes. You've got a voice telling you all the time, 100% of us, you're not good enough. So why don't we just collectively admit that we all have that voice. Now that that's out of the way, God, can you bless me to have more influence than I could possibly do on my own? <laughs> Enlarge the place of your tent, God says. Stretch out your curtains wide. Don't hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. You will spread out to the right and the left, and your descendants will possess nations and settle in their des desolate cities. In other words, have an expansive vision. God wants you to impact more. I think about how my grandfather was a man who lost everything and was in poverty in the Great Depression. And I think about my dad, how he was raised in the middle of a wheat field in the middle of nowhere, but God chose him. I look how God blessed his life and took him to places he never could have dreamed and used him to reach people in ways that he couldn't have imagined. Some of the, some of the largest churches, there's large churches in the east coast of this country that are pastored by people, and you never heard the name of my dad, but he led those guys to Christ. You know, because that's just that God blessed him. And then I look what God's doing in my life. And then I look at what my kids are doing at their age. And I think the blessing of God increases on the generations. Like, I just thank God for blessing us with more, more. And, and he's no respecter of person. God will do that for any person. So God, bless me and expand my territory. And watch what he says. Let your hand be with me. When God's hand is on your life, that's like security. That's like, that's like um, the presence of God in everything that you do. So pray for God's presence to be on you. There's something about going to church, and then there's something about encountering the presence of God. Do you guys know the difference? You've been in those places. You can walk into a church, and you walk in, and it's like... It's like a breath of fresh air. It's like, oh, this is different. Oh my gosh, I feel the Holy Spirit here. I sense the presence of God. And that is what is going on in your life. If that's God, you should answer that phone. I heard that. He might be reaching out. That's like an old school ringer. Somebody's like, I don't want to ever miss one call. Turn that on in some old school. <laughs> Where was I? Three, three things. Listen, when, when God's presence is on your life, let me tell you, it's like, it's like oxygen. It's like a fresh air. It's like you come alive. And I want you to pray that, Lord, let my life have the qualities of your presence. You know, if we're going to abide in him and he's going to grow our lives, you know what something needs to grow? It needs air. So God, let me be a breath of fresh air. And, and 
God, let me bring, a plant needs water to grow, so God, let me bring that living water from you. As you water my life, Lord, let me water every person around me. You know what else a plant needs to grow is light. So God, let me be like a light in the darkness. Where I, when Students, when you walk into your school, you can be like a, a, a light that lights up that classroom. You can light up everywhere you go because you walk in with the presence of Jesus on your life. You may feel like you're not enough, but pray, God, light, use me to light up my world. And I can tell you, a grateful, respectful a uh, young person that's filled with hope and purpose and passion for God, they light up every place that they go. You'll lead people way older than you when you walk in with the presence of God. I'm telling you, it's just true. So pray for the presence of God in your life. God, God, let, my, let your presence in me just light up every place that's dark. Like there are so many depressed and discouraging people. So God, bless me with more than I need so that I can be a blessing to others. Last part of the prayer, God protect me from harm. So we're just praying for protection. That's easy enough, because the devil's gonna try to stop all this blessing, but you're saying, Lord, I pray that you would cover me and protect me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I will not be afraid. And we're gonna pray about that today. So say these four things with me. Blessing, and then influence, and presence, and protection. Let's say that again. Blessing, influence, presence, and protection. You wanna pray for all those things today, and that is a scriptural prayer that you can pray to increase the blessing of God on your life. Do you guys receive this today? All right. So we got cards to pray for. We've got post-it notes on the wall. And I want you to take some time. After you've kind of had your moment with God, don't spend time feeling down and depressed and spending time thinking about all your shortcomings. You've had 14 days to do that. Now it's time for you to say, God, thank you for your peace. Thank you for your forgiveness. And I want you to pray for blessing. And some of you really need prayer in your life. So we've got our team that's gonna come up here today. And they're just gonna be available to pray for any miracle, any need, any heavy burden that you're carrying. And then we'll get back together and pray at about uh, 9.45. All right, let's get to prayer. is my firm foundation the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking I'm
we won't fear the fire. There is one who's stronger. Yeah. Hard pressed on each side, we will not lose sight of the one who's great. Come on, let's sing that out. One name, one name, one name holds everything.
today he's more than able why do I say that because he rose from the dead that's what this means right here in your hand get one of these little communion cups out we would not be celebrating this if Jesus didn't rise from the dead so it would have been another person who lived and died and went but because he rose from the dead all power is in his hands and you, you know that he has the power now to raise everything that's dead or dying in our lives. God, today we thank you for your body broken. Thank you for enduring the punishment for our forgiveness. Thank you for the healing that you provided. Thank you that the foundation for deliverance was in your death. Thank you that we can have a relationship with God because of your death, how you've paid for our sins. God, we thank you for everything that you endured, Lord. Thank you that we are no longer condemned. Thank you that we are no longer afraid. We're not fearful slaves trying to keep a list of things of right and wrongs. We're just sons and daughters today because of Jesus. And we thank you for our relationship that we have with you through him. Let's eat this bread together. Thank you, Jesus, that you rose from the dead. Thank you, Jesus. One day we'll share this moment somehow with you. You said that we'll stand around your throne, people from every language and tribe and tongue from all over the world, and we'll be calling you the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb. And then you will show up and we will eat and drink this meal together. We'll remember what you did. Oh, what a day that will be, Lord. We're going to see you face to face. Thank you for your life that gives me life. Thank you for the power of your resurrection. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for this little preview of heaven right now in this church. Thank you, Lord. Let's drink together. Thank you, Lord. I believe that, that God is really pleased by all of you being here. I mean, young and old, the generations together. This is, this is what community and faith and church is supposed to look like. I wanna do something different today. I wanted to bring my mom and dad to come up on either side. I wouldn't be here and none of us would be here if it weren't for them. And I'm gonna ask them to lead us in prayer today and I want you to just realize like how God works. We, we just think that, we just think about our own little life but God works through the generations. What God is doing in your life is going to bless people in the future. Gonna bless children, gonna bless grandchildren. Things that your parents, if they believed in Jesus, that they carried has, has brought blessing into your life that you've received. Come on, let's just give God thank, thanks for blessing that comes through generations. We stand here today on the shoulders with the names of those who have gone before us. So one of the great scriptures is, uh, God, I thank you that I am the son of your maid servant. And that's absolutely true for me. That's my mom who has served the Lord. And she's going to start and lead us in prayer today. Will you put your hands together for my mom? Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we love you today. We praise you from the bottom of our hearts for your goodness, your kindness. You forgive all our sins. You heal all our diseases. You've redeemed us from, and you crown us with love and compassion. And as we stand here in your presence today, we ask that you lead us and guide us into a deeper relationship with you. May our lives bring glory to your name. May a blessing 
Make us a blessing to all that you bring into our, our sphere of influence. May our lives be a blessing. May Jesus shine through us. Thank you for you, that you never change. You are our anchor in every storm. Bless every young person, every child, every adult here today. And Lord, bless our leaders and pastors and thank you for them, for every person represented on these post-it notes around this room today. We choose to believe for answered prayer, for miracles of healing, for salvation, and that you will be glorified in this house. And Lord, we pray that you would make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's darkness, light. And when there, where there's sadness, joy. And we pray this in your precious name. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise my dad, everybody. Oh, yeah. You think you can make it through this without crying? Uh, I doubt it. <laughs> I love my dad's soft heart. It's where yes. I get it from. Well, I, I'm so thrilled to be able to pray for the young people of this church today. It's the young people who are the, the, the forerunners of the gospel to our community. And in our experience, years ago, we equipped the young people of our church to go out and on the streets to share Christ. And we gave them the simple tools. We put it in their hands, how to lead a soul to Christ. And probably that's the most important thing you need to know is how to share your faith effectively with those that you meet. And if you haven't as yet really put that into practice, uh, your leaders will help you, I'm sure. And so I'm gonna pray that God will equip you and, 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 and send you out as an army and that you will raise up people for the glory of God and uh, extend the church. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Darren mentioned earlier about, about the churches in, in, on the East Coast. There's a church in Brooklyn, in Queens, in Newark, in Miami and Atlanta where thousands of people meet every week only because we sent them out early as young people to tear the gospel and they came over to the states uh, years later to educate their children but God has used them mightily and so God is going to use you mightily and I want to pray for you today right now in Jesus name just raise your hand toward God Gracious Heavenly Father, we are grateful that the teens and young adults of Heartland Church family have a glorious purpose, to love God with all their hearts and to put Jesus Christ first in their lives. Because of their love for you, they are seated in heavenly realms and united with you. They are committed to being more like you their old lives are gone and a new life has begun. Lord, it is your will that they are joyful always, ceaseless in prayer and thankful in all circumstances. In Jesus' name, we declare that they are free from the power of sin yes. and have yes. become sons and daughters of Christ. They do only things, those things that lead to holiness and result in becoming more like Christ. We declare that wisdom will fill their hearts with joy and peace. Holy Spirit, help our dear young people to strip off every weight that slows them down, especially the sins that so easily trip them up. It is essential to teach them to run with endurance in the race God has set before them. Search them, O God, and know their hearts. Test them and know their anxious thoughts. Point out anything in them that offends you and lead them along the path to everlasting life. Help them 
trust to trust the Lord daily with all their hearts, not leaning on their own understanding, but to putting their trust in you. Give them a heart to seek your will in all they do that you can show them which path to take. Show them how to make divine connections with others who will hold them accountable and help keep them focused. And may nothing deter them from pressing forward or toward the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ, has, is calling them. Lord, show them the place and position that you have ordained for them in your kingdom. Help us as a church family, all of us as adults and elderly folk, to embrace them and empower our young people to stand firm in their faith in the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen, 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 amen. We got a couple minutes. Lord, thank you for blessing us. Yes, Lord. And I pray this blessing that you have placed upon our family, Lord. It's not because it's our family, we're special. We just, we just, I'm just so grateful, Lord, to stand on the shoulders of people who just said yes to you and went where you called them to go. And the blessing of God was on their life. And somehow, Lord, even when I was far from you and I wasn't listening to you, you didn't give up on me. Thank you that you had your eyes on me. Thank you that you treated me like a son when I wasn't acting like a son. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Come on, give God praise for that. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. Lord, I thank you for mercy. And I pray today. Oh, that you would bless me. Come on, ask God to bless you. Oh, that you would bless me, enlarge my territory, let your hand be with me, that I'll be free from pain. Lord, we're gonna, we're gonna ask you to grant that request because there's no condemnation in our lives. We have nothing to prove to you. Lord, we are your sons and daughters, and from that place of security, God, you are alive in us, you're alive in me. And today, Lord, we pray that as we walk in your presence and as we walk in the Holy Spirit, you would bless us with more than we need so that we can be a blessing to those around us. I pray for every young person, every adult, every older person. I pray for all of us, Lord, that whatever you put inside of us, we'll be able to give it away to others. Bless us so that we can fulfill our purpose, Lord. Bless us to be a blessing. Bless us with generosity. Bless us with the right word. Bless us with comfort. Bless our homes. Bless our families. Bless our children. Bless our spouses, Lord. Bless our grandchildren. Bless our church, Lord. Let there be no uh, plague or any kind of sickness beyond our house. Lord, we pray for the blessing of God to make us strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. I pray that you would bless us with influence, with gifts, with talents, with resources, with finances. Bless businesses. Bless people with wisdom and understanding. Help them to have a God-sized vision. Help them them not to be afraid. Help them to see and expand and do what you call them to do. We say greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world and we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So Lord, just bless us today, not just us, but bless the whole church, every church in this city, Lord. Turn this city on fire for you. God, bless people to come to know you. I pray it even tomorrow as we gather that people who are discouraged, even to the point of death, they will see the light. They will wake up. They'll feel your presence. They will come to know you. And may we see, Lord, lives change for the glory of God. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So be it, Lord. Last, last thing, the greatest blessing in my life is my beautiful wife, Laurie, and it is her birthday today. Happy birthday. I love you. You know, I don't know how old she is. I ain't going to tell you. <laughs> you ask her, she'll tell you. All right, you guys go have an amazing Saturday. I love you guys so much. Thanks for praying. We'll see you tomorrow, all of our services. Can't wait. God bless you.